What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, we're gonna check out moments that were not supposed to happen at WWE Crown Jewel 2024. Um, I think the most noticeable one, and I think a lot of people caught when it happened live, was the I guess you could say the botch pinfall um sequence where uh solo had pinned Roman Reigns, but Roman Reigns, but I believe Jimmy didn't get there in enough time so it looked as if the referee counted three but he kind of had to like hold back because he was waiting for jimmy to get there at the right time but they it was a miscommunication timing wise like it was a timing issue jimmy didn't get there quick enough and essentially the match should have been over right then and there you know, I know a lot of y'all saw it live on the stream, and that's just a timing issue. So I'm sure that's going to be in this video. I didn't know if there was any other issues that may have happened. I've seen a few botches here and there, but you know, I don't know if they're going to talk about this in this particular video. Maybe there were some other issues I didn't know about. But we're going to check this out. Appreciate all love support. Let's get right into it. 2024 is officially in the books. So with that being said, let's look at all the things that weren't supposed to happen at WWE Crown Jewel 2024. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new videos on WrestleMania XL. But now let's head into our first botch, as number one, Kathy Kelly almost breaks. Now on the Crown Jewel pre-show, Kevin Owens discussed how he was in a buggy accident and Owens brought humor to the situation by claiming that either Randy Orton or Cody Rhodes paid the driver off to cause the accident. Now upon saying this, Kathy Kelly looked like she was about to break character wow. and laugh. The WWE production team clearly recognized this as the camera began to zoom in on Owens to oh, avoid wow. showing Kelly up close. Number That's two, funny. Jimmy Uso misses his cue. Yep. At the opening contest of the Crown Jewel 2024 saw the original bloodline led by Roman Reigns take on the new bloodline led by Solo Sokoa. The match served as a perfect prelude to the inevitable war game showdown, but there was a major botch in the match that had fans talking. Yep. As Sokoa hit a devastating Samoan spike on Reigns, the planned spot was supposed to see Jimmy Uso break up the pin. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, this didn't go to plan, as Jimmy missed his cue. This meant that the referee just seemingly stopped his count before Jimmy even got in the ring. Yeah. WWE even tried to disguise this thanks to their elite camera work, but even still, a yeah. strong majority of the fans noticed this massive botch. A six-man tag matches can be extremely chaotic, and it's likely that Jimmy just got lost in the moment. Thankfully, the names involved were able to recover well, and the planned finish went ahead as scheduled. Yeah, it, it was just a missed time. Like, cause you know, he should have been there a little bit sooner. It happens, you know, but luckily they were able to somewhat kind of maneuver through it and it didn't bog down the match too much. Come to think of it, 2024 has had a lot of three count botches. Yeah. Number three, Haluva kick. At the post-match angle for the Bloodline versus Bloodline saw Sami Zayn reinsert himself into the Bloodline saga. The spot in question saw Solo Sokoa looking primed for a beatdown in the middle of the ring, but when Zayn went for his Aluva kick, he accidentally hit Reigns square in the mouth. Now, this has led to fans questioning Zayn, as the Aluva kick is usually hit in the corner. So in theory, Zayn was going for a traditional big boot. Has Zayn mm -hmm. even ever hit his trademark finisher in any other position? It was a unique spot to say the very least, but that was not a Aluva kick. Number four, I thought it was. I, I actually I, I definitely did think it was, but I get what he's saying. Usually he hits the Luva kick while the other person's in the corner. So yeah, I thought that's what he was going for going for, but it makes sense because he wasn't solo was in the middle of the ring. I mean, I think that's a here and you know, like a here and there type situation. It's not really like a, a big deal per se, but I guess you can say it wasn't a Huluva kick, it was just a big boot that he missed. Uh, end up hitting Roman with. Botched German suplex. A Wee Sky rarely botches in a matches, yet there was a noticeable mishap with a German suplex during the multi women tag titles match. Sky would attempt a bridging German on Bianca Belair, but the positioning was off, so mm -hmm. the bridge was virtually impossible. It also looked like Sky had a horrific landing. Hopefully, Sky is mm -hmm. okay as she was able to continue wrestling after the spot, so current signs are positive. Now, this wouldn't be the only time that Sky were botching the match, as when Jakara Jackson was sitting prone in the corner, she was supposed to ascend over Kairi Singh yeah. and perform a move. However, she slipped. Hell yeah. The commentary team would address the botch directly by stating that it was a rare miscommunication from Sky and Sane. Number five, a botch bicycle kick. 
But Jade Cargill continues to gradually improve in the ring, yet she is still delivering a botch or two in every featured oh, PLE yeah. match. During Crown Jewel, Cargill went for a bicycle kick and she completely missed, missed it. Yeah. It looked horrendous and it's definitely Yeah, people talk, said that on the uh, on the live stream. I, I actually missed this part, but from what people were saying in the chat, she completely missed the kick that Cargill shall look to remove from her moveset. The botch looked even worse because Lash Legend took a bump despite Cargill not making any contact whatsoever. The fact that Legend took the bump made it look like Cargill delivered the move correctly, but this simply isn't what happened. Cargill has other styles of kicks in her arsenal, and these are rarely botched, so it may have been in her best interest if the other kicks are prioritized over the bicycle kick. Number 6. A Rough Landing A Lash Legend and Jakara Jackson had a great showing in the aforementioned match, but they were lucky that one spot didn't result in an injury to Kairi Sane. Sane would be thrown onto Legend's shoulders and then she would be flipped into a powerbomb. But sadly, Jackson's timing was completely off. Oh, yeah. Nevertheless, Sane managed to land perfectly. The spot was rather ambitious and would have been hard to execute without a hitch. Yeah. Legend and Jackson have greatly impressed since their inclusion on the main roster programming and both women have stepped up and made their presence felt in the women's tag division. It's unknown if they are set for a full-time main roster call-up or the main roster appearances are just serving to- Hey, they, they're pushing them. And I like what they're doing with them. Add depth to the main roster women's tag division and subsequently cross promote the NXT brand on the CW network. Number seven, Seth Rollins' laceration. One of the noticeable things about Seth oh, Rollins yeah. during his match with Bronson Reed was his laceration. Early on, it became apparent that Rollins had suffered a deep laceration on his back. It appears that this surfaced during the opening brawl between. My man is out here wrestling in the Space Jams. Crispy ass Jordans. Crazy. The two men. At first, it looked like the cut was bleeding heavily. However, as the match went on, the bleeding stopped, and it didn't appear to be causing the former WWE champion too much difficulty. Number eight, Bronson Reed's laceration. Yeah, I think he was Speaking going to talk of about lacerations, that. Bronson Reed also suffered a serious laceration. Like Reed took a brutal bump, and this led to his eye being busted open. It's unclear if this was a planned spot, but whatever the case is, it was a great visual and it's certainly really added great to visual, Reed's monstrous sure. presentation. Rollins' victory came as somewhat of a surprise, as some fans were of the belief that Reed would win and be propelled into the main event picture. However, with confirmation that Rollins will be involved in an upcoming world title contenders matchup, then it's possible that WWE wants to keep Rollins as strong as possible. It's also possible that the feud between the two isn't over, as a rematch between the two is not as a solid addition to the Survivor Series War Games card at I the end of the calendar I month. They Number give nine, them Nia match. Jax waits for the interference. At the final moments of Nia Jax vs Liv Morgan saw numerous names interfere, and as Jax was about to perform the Annihilator on Morgan, she had to wait for Raquel Rodriguez to kick her off the ropes. Rodriguez took a few seconds too long to perform her planned spot, mm -hmm. and this left Jax in a weird predicament. She yeah. looked kind of ridiculous. Yeah. This was surprisingly the only notable botch in the match, which comes as a surprise mainly because of the amount of bodies involved in the interference spots in the match. So all the names involved deserve a ton of credit for making the match run smoothly. Number 10, Cody Graves. Whenever Michael Cole <laughs> makes a botch on commentary, he's prone to referencing it directly by making a joke out of the situation. During Crown Jewel, as US champion LA Knight made his entrance, Cole hilariously referred to his broadcast colleague Corey Graves as Cody. Cole then stated that it's easy to get confused between two of his best friends, obviously referring to the WWE champion Cody Rhodes. In the old era of WWE, Cole would have no doubt been ridiculed by Vince McMahon for making a botch of this nature. Thankfully, under the leadership of Triple H, Cole is free to make mistakes, and this gives us show in the commentary a more organic, less contrived feeling when yeah. fans have reacted extremely it's, positively towards it. It's, it's Number fine. 11, LA Knight. I, I'm, I'm all cool when they make their little mistakes and stuff like that. It, it works. It gives them that, it gives that real live feel like sometimes, you know, you slip up. It slips. LA Knight's mortal enemy is the ropes, as yes, whenever he watches is. a move, it's usually down to him slipping on the ring ropes. During Crown Jewel, Knight attempted to jump onto the ropes and he yep. slipped. Knight is truly cursed with this specific spot, <laughs> but he always manages to recover extremely well and proceed into the planned spot. Number 12, Andrade lands on LA Knight's head. A moonsault of any kind should land on the wrestler's stomach or chest region, and the head should be avoided at all I think costs. I remember this During Crown Jewel, Andrade landed well. his trademark standing moonsault, and his knees went directly oh, on yeah. LA Knight's head. Ooh. This spot is quick paced, and if the timing is even slightly off, then Andrade is going to land in an awkward position, and this was the case here, unfortunately. Now, this could have resulted in a significant injury, but Knight was okay, and the match was arguably the match of the night based on yeah, fans' reactions. His really match too. received this is awesome chance throughout, and some fans are even campaigning for the WWE to run it back on an upcoming edition of SmackDown. Please do. 
running back uh, on SmackDown, uh, on a, on War Games, somewhere. Run that shit back so we can see this again. I want to see it one more time because this was really good. All three of these guys killed it. All three of these guys killed it. Down, or even at Survivor Series. The match was a true breakout moment for Carmelo Hayes and Andrade, yep. who have both been highlights on SmackDown for months now. As for Knight, his US title reign continues to impress, and his popularity hasn't dipped one bit since he captured the title from Logan Paul at SummerSlam. And did WWE spoil Cody Rhodes' win? A Cody Rhodes is a new crown jewel champion, and some fans believe that the WWE spoiled Rhodes' win before the match. In did the they? graphic for the post-crown jewel show, it looked like Rhodes had the new title on his shoulder. Whilst the title was indeed present in the graphic, oh. it's hard to make out if the title was just wedged between a render of Rhodes and Gunther as it was a line separating the respective images. One way to tell would be if the WWE used that exact render for Rhodes when advertising his win, and if they do, then we all know that WWE spoiled their blockbuster oh, main event. I didn't but they even have realize it, folks. that. Moments that were Hey, man. <clears throat> this was still a, a good show. I mean, most shows have some type of botching or some type of mistake that happens, but... It is what it is. If you're able to, you know, kind of recover from it and move forward, you know, most people are not going to talk about it. Obviously, the pinning combinations, people are going to talk about those because, you know, that's a pinning combination, a pinning sequence that decides to match. And if the ref has to, like, pretty much stop himself for doing the counting the three, it can definitely hamper down the match just a bit. But either way, I still enjoy Crown Jewel. I had a good time with it. I'm looking forward to seeing what's going to happen on Monday Night Raw. I believe they are they are still in Saudi Arabia, so they're filming Raw. Um, I believe today. Um, this I'm filming this on Sunday, so they're filming it. I believe today, so it's going to be a, a pre-taped uh, situation when we watch it tomorrow um, on the USA Network. So we'll see how that plays out. So I'm gonna try to stay away from it. as many spoilers as I possibly can. But I appreciate all love sport road to 150k. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.